All right. Well, good morning again. My name is Kerry. I'm with SimCloud. We're pleased to have so many of you with us here today. This is the SimCloud migration webinar. Um, just a couple housekeeping being items before we get started today. As a reminder, uh, this is a live presentation and we have several members of the SimCloud team with us here today. Should you have any questions, all we ask is that you use the question panel located in GoToWebinar to submit those questions and you can submit them at any point. Uh, we are probably gonna hold on to most of them until the very end, unless there's something specific I think we can address up front, but we will have an opportunity to answer those questions. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce our presenter today. We have uh, Chris Bradley will be walking us through today's presentation. Chris is our VP of Operations. And as it relates to migrating your website, Chris is probably one of the more knowledgeable folks in our organization that he has served across a variety of roles. And many of you, in fact, may already know him. So we're pleased to have Chris here with us and to guide us through today's webinar. And with that, I'm gonna get out of the way and hand it over to Chris. Chris. Uh, thank you, Kerry. Uh, and thank you, uh, everyone, for uh, joining us on the webinar today and appreciate you taking time out of your day to hear uh, everything we're doing at SimCloud to uh, regarding these migrations to better deliver your website migration to you and support your implementation efforts. Uh, so our agenda for today, uh, we're, I'll first just want to do a quick recap of the migration process we, we started out in January um, and the great response we had from our customers, including all of you. So we, we are very much appreciate your business and, and thank you very much for the excitement and enthusiasm uh, for the newer product. Um, the response did present some challenges and opportunities for us as an organization to improve um, processes we have for deploying our product, as well as the tools and processes around supporting you uh, as you go through your implementation work. And that's the, the reason we're here today is to talk about uh, all of that, the impact that it's had on timing and scheduling. Uh, so we're going to review our uh, wave schedule. Uh, this is how we're working to manage the workload and to give you a more accurate deliverables and timeline expectations uh, for the website migration. Uh, we'll also cover what you can be doing today to be ready for your website migration if it has not started. And then lastly, as Carrie mentioned, we'll wrap up with a quick Q&A. Um, so let's jump right into uh, the migration response and uh, the impact that it's had on, on us and on the, the different scheduling here. Uh, so as I mentioned, the, the response to the migrations uh, was fantastic. Uh, a lot of our customers were very excited about the new product and are anxious to get going and get all the products and tools into the hands of the workers and the new interfaces and mobile responsiveness and, and different features that are in the newer product into the hands of our customers. Um, that large number of migration requests all came in pretty quickly um, and it presented the challenges and exposed some limitations in our deployment processes and our support processes and tools. We needed to get those optimized before we could really start scaling up uh, uh, the delivery rate um, of those migrations and how quickly we can get those sites built, deployed, configured, integrated, and in your hands for you to start doing uh, your implementation work. We have completed a number of customer migrations. Some of those have gone from new site build and deployment all the way through go live, and several others are already in the hands of our customers and they're working through uh, their work to get the website up and live, uh, the implementation work that's on their side of the project. Uh, so there's been a lot of lessons learned. Um, we're still learning uh, going through the process and all those learnings we're getting, we're taking that, iterating our processes and improving our tools um, and to more efficiently deliver uh, the website to you and support you through your process. The process changes we made included uh, establishing the wave schedule that we'll talk through uh, here as part of this webinar. Um, and then we've also added more content to the SimCloud Help Center. And this is all around assisting you with that self-service implementation. If you have not visited the Help Center, I definitely encourage you to go there. There's gonna be several points in this uh, presentation. We're gonna be trying to push you there to get information. And that is help.simcloud.com. So some questions I anticipate you having are, uh, why are we spreading out the work? And also what wave is your site in? Um, so SimCloud is currently providing our portion of the standard migration work that includes the platform deployment, the ERP install for our standard connectors and implementation support at no additional cost to our classic customers who chose to migrate. Um, that's a material amount of labor of some, from our skilled developers and other uh, uh, resources within the company uh, to complete that part of the project. Um, so we have to have that work scheduled and balanced in order to ensure we're providing prompt and high quality service to you. The wave your website was is in was included in the webinar invitation email, um, but if you're unsure of which wave uh, your website is in as the target start date that we're planning to uh, start your deployment, 
Uh, you can contact our customer success team and they can assist you with determining the wave that you're in. Um, and we'll have their contact information up on screen uh, here at the end of the presentation. So let's talk about the wave schedule uh, and start dates for each wave. So we assigned customer website deployments to waves based on a few factors. Uh, when you confirmed your migration or the order date, when you, you said, yes, we're, I intend to migrate, uh, and the project start date that you requested when you made that. So we had a HubSpot form that some of you would have filled out with a projected start date that you were picking anywhere from a July timeframe to sometime in 2022. So it gave you several options uh, in that form. So the date that you uh, confirmed your order and the date that you uh, requested when you did that um, are some of the factors that went into the wave assignments. Other factors that may have impacted your website's wave assignment could have been add-ons that were not in your existing website scope uh, that were added through that process or any custom development that would need to be migrated. Uh, so in addition to balancing workloads with our uh, uh, SaaS team for product deployment and implementation support, we also are working to balance our workload in our professional services team a bit. So those are all things that were considered uh, for the wave assignment. Uh, and the goal of each wave is to give you um, targeted timelines for you to prepare your project plan and to allow you to complete some other requirements and prep work uh, before we start our process to give you the best chance of success. So there are two waves that are complete or in progress currently. Uh, wave one includes sites that are already deployed and those are the sites that would already be live or the customers are working through that implementation work and getting you know, their, their tasks done, confirming their product data, going through testing uh, or working with our professional services team on their customizations. Um, and we have wave two deployments in progress now. Our product deployment team is working to build, configure and deploy those sites uh, and our implementation support team is ready to assist them um, whenever they're needing help. Wave three is uh, scheduled to start in August, followed by wave four in September. And we're gonna to continue to start each wave as scheduled and try to stick to the schedule as best we can. Uh, while we're working diligently to keep it on track, these start dates could change based on how quickly we work through the backlog of the different waves. So should these target dates need to shift, um, whether it's we are gonna to need to push back uh, the start away thought, or you're in wave four, but we think we can start your website sooner. Uh, should any of those start dates need to be changed, uh, we'll be proactively communicating with everyone and you specifically if it's an individual site thing um, uh, via email or from a phone call from our customer success team. So uh, as part of this scheduling and the process changes we, that we've been making, um, we've, we've created these stages to kind of let you see which stage of uh, not started to project close out your live and where everything is done. Um, so uh, each project uh, will have five stages uh, that they'll go through and your work begins in stage zero. So really before SimCloud starts anything with our product deployment team, you can begin stage zero and that's your prep work. Um, there's detailed documents, there's checklists, and all sorts of other information that's in that help center, uh, the help.simcloud.com, for you to review to complete this stage. And when you have completed stage zero and SimCloud confirms that we're ready to start the deployment piece from our, uh, our end, that's the time that we can establish that start date for your specific site. And again, the targeted time frame or, or what was communicated in the wave schedule. So you can definitely get started on your stage zero work today. And if you have not uh, been to the help center and seen that information, definitely encourage you to do that. Um, the full scope of everything that is in all the different stages can be found in the help center at help.simcloud.com slash migration reference guide. Um, if you don't remember that, just when you get to help center, just search for migration and you'll see the migration reference guide in the suggested article drop down. So next steps. Um, so uh, the, what you need to do next depends upon the wave that you're in. So if you're on the call today and you were one of those customers that were in wave one or wave two, uh, but you've not completed that work that's in the help center and that stage zero work, uh, it's time to catch up on those to-dos. Um, you'll find that the implementation work you're embarking on now, or if you're in one of those later waves that you'll be uh, having to work through, will be a lot easier. Uh, and you'll also identify if you have any resource gaps, whether it's content data gaps or people gaps, uh, skills or, or resources that you may need to assist you with the work uh, getting completed. You'll be able to identify those as you work through that process. 
And then for those of you that are in wave, wave three or further out, it's time to get ahead. So start today, start working through that stage zero uh, work now and let us know what questions you have. And completing stage zero is critical to having a successful implementation. Um, so we're requiring it to, get, to be done uh, before we can schedule that start date. So again, once you've completed stage zero work and SimCloud is ready to start, that's when we'll agree on your start date uh, within that wave time window and uh, get things rolling for you. So if you haven't started stage zero, uh, it's time to, to start digging into those content. It's videos, checklists, all sorts of articles. So uh, we know some of you expect some of you to be wanting an earlier start date uh, than where you're currently targeted to, to be assigned. Uh, based off the wave assignment so if you do need uh, to uh, request a schedule change or have questions about why you're in the schedule you're in a couple of things we ask for you to do first uh, determine what your requested start date would be um, look at your calendars and uh, uh, understand uh, when you would like to get started and then look at the information that's in the stage zero requirements uh, go through all the information to determine can you complete that by that requested start date if you believe that you can reach out to our customer success team uh, Olivia Mel, uh, was, her information was in the email that we sent out where we communicated the waves and we communicated um, uh, the webinar for today. Um, but her information is here on screen as well. You can email her or call her and she can work with our team internally to answer any questions you have or look to see what we can do to adjust our schedule to accommodate your request. Um, so if you'd like to get a, an earlier start date, that's the process to request that. But also if you look at, at the wave that you're in and you feel like you could start later, um, and it's not a problem for you to start later and you want to ask to get deferred and allow another customer to, to maybe start sooner, we're open to that as well. We'll definitely uh, willing to work with you on your schedules as best we can. So for, uh, for more information about the waves and a lot more detail uh, on the different uh, specific items that are included in each stage, including uh, what work we're doing as we progress through the different deployment implementation stages, um, what's involved with the implementation support and the go-live processes, the Help Center is going to be your best friend. Uh, if you go to help.simcloud.com forward slash waves, uh, that uh, article has tons of information, videos, links to other articles that, and really detailed information about all those different processes. Um, so I uh, definitely encourage you to, to go through that article as well. And again, get started with your stage zero by reviewing the content there. And with that, Kerry, I think we're ready to go into our Q&A. Hey, right, great. Thanks, Chris. We appreciate that. So again, as a reminder, uh, we do have multiple members of the team, Chris, Olivia included, on the call here today. So if you have questions broadly about the process or something specific about your site, please go ahead and submit those now using the uh, question and answer session panel. And we will keep that panel open as long as we have questions coming in. Um, question. First question we've got that I can actually handle is, uh, is it possible to get a copy of today's presentation? The answer to that is yes. Uh, if you go to the SimCloud help article that Chris referenced, that's at help.simcloud.com forward slash waves, uh, probably by the early part of next week, we will have a posting of today's uh, webinar up and accessible from that page. So uh, if a colleague or somebody else was unable to attend today and they would like that information, um, they can, uh, certainly do so. Um, so let me go also to our next question. This question is coming from Emily. Uh, Emily would like to know, uh, besides specific customizations, Chris, um, uh, will everything else on our site sync over and or is there any additional prep work needed in that area? So um, aside from specific customizations, is everything else going to sync over, Chris, and or is there any other special work required? Yeah, it's a gr uh, great question. So as part of that deployment process, um, our deployment team will build a brand new website from the latest version of our product. Um, and then we will do a data migration to pull over a snapshot of data from your existing live website. That will include 100% of your data except for your invoice and sales order history. Uh, we prefer to sync that data directly from your ERP system, uh, particularly for sites like your, uh, most of you that would be you know, seven, eight years old, perhaps, uh, where you may not need that much uh, data to be migrated over, and it would just be a lot more efficient to sync over the data we need from your ERP, a lot more accurate. So um, every, all the other data will be a copy from your existing website. Uh, so all of your product data, your product images, all of your accounts, customer logins, shipping addresses will be 
copied over uh, from your existing website. Um, at that point in time, you're kind of in a dual data management mode. So if you are mod modifying product content, for example, on your live website, you'll want to make sure you keep those changes up to date on your uh, uh, new website and vice versa uh, to avoid any kind of data loss uh, prior to go live. But um, outside of that, there's not a lot of extra work um, related to the data migration or, or getting things copied over. Um, so the standard features will be turned on to match the scope of your website. Uh, so if you have ratings and reviews, that will be turned on and tested prior to you getting your website. Any customizations you have, those will not be brought over, including custom design, uh, any kind of custom JavaScript, things like Google Analytics or chatbots or uh, other marketing tools would not be installed yet. Uh, and those are all things that that uh, stage zero checklist and your implementation content will walk you through how you can do those things yourself inside the uh, worker portal or the, the new version of what you would know as WebDriver. Um, so you have a lot of work to do on the implementation side, but not a lot related to getting your data migrated over. Great, thanks, Chris. We appreciate you answering that question. Um, next question is, um, uh, how was the wave order that, or how was the wave we were slotted into determined? Just looking for some background on that. Chris, do you want to take that one? Uh, yeah. So. Um, so like we covered it earlier in the webinar, the date of the order uh, was the first thing we looked at. So first in, first out. Then we looked at the date that you requested to get started. We had some customers that notified us in February that they wanted to do the migration, but they couldn't start until November or December because of peak selling times or volume uh, through the year. So uh, those were two factors that went into it. Then as we're looking through our deployments, uh, Fringe add-ons, if, if there's add-ons that are uh, not used as frequently or they require more uh, effort and work to get deployed or are more complicated and likely to have more support from our implementation team, some of those may have been uh, caused you to be deferred a little further out to give us more time to prep more of those self-service tools to assist you and ensure you have a, a more successful uh, implementation of those features. The last piece would have been any uh, real heavy customization work uh, from our professional services team and just trying to balance that out a bit uh, to help them with their workload and scheduling. Um, those are the four main criteria. There are other things on an account by account or site by site specific uh, input that would have uh, factored in some of that as well. Um, if we already had other projects in flight with you, um, if there was uh, uh, other, other items we were already uh, in progress with you on, uh, those all could have weighed into it. Great. I think that's excellent. Thank you, uh, Chris, for answering that. Uh, next question is kind of related uh, to that as well. Um, uh, James would like to know in his email, it's indicating that he's in wave six. So just looking to confirm that's uh, early 2022 or Q1 for when that wave would uh, go live. Is that correct? I'm just getting the slide back here. Um, Correct. Wave, wave six is currently uh, targeted to start first quarter of, of 2022. Uh, there are some folks that are in wave six that may start later than first quarter of 2022. Um, so it, you know, that wave six could extend beyond the first quarter, but the current target start date is uh, first quarter of 2022. Okay, great. Uh, next question, uh, how can I learn what features are included uh, in the core product as opposed to uh, their existing website? Uh, there's articles in the Help Center. We can uh, get that shared out to a uh, specific link to whomever uh, did ask that question, but there's uh, articles in the, the Help Center that will uh, go over base packages, uh, what's included in the migration, and then uh, in your migration uh, document that you received from the account manager that you worked with to get that scoped out, uh, should be a complete listing of features in that document that are included in the, the base package and any add-on bundles that you would have selected. Okay, great. Um, and then there was kind of a follow-up question, uh, and this is, I think you touched on a little bit, um, you know, if folks do have peak seasons um, that you are trying to avoid doing an upgrade uh, with, uh, again, reach out to Olivia, uh, let her know that, uh, whether Chris mentioned you'd like to pull it forward or if you want to push it back, uh, to get out of a peak season. Um, uh, if your current wave assignment doesn't put, or you just want to touch base and make sure that we know over here on our side, uh, uh, Libby would be your point of contact. And if you let her know, she can make sure that we um, pass that along to the team. 
So I'm going to keep the session open here for just a couple more minutes. I've answered all of the questions uh, that have been submitted so far. Again, as a reminder, um, if you would like to see this in a printed form or to see the video, you can go to the SimCloud Help Center, which can be found at help.simcloud.com, specifically for this forward slash waves. Um, or you can type waves in the search engine and you should be able to find it. So we appreciate everyone's attendance here today. Hopefully we found uh, today's webinar useful. And uh, again, if you have any questions throughout the process, please don't hesitate to reach out. And with that, I uh, definitely hope everyone here has a wonderful afternoon. We'll be in touch soon. Take care. Bye.